Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Longu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there is something in particular that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below, and we'll do it for you guys. Check out our second YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse 2.0. Head there, subscribe, and enjoy the content. We've got a podcast called Diving in with Funny and Jesse, and we have some amazing, amazing, amazing conversations which you guys don't want to miss. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, this channel, or our second YouTube channel for the visual. And we have a Patreon. You guys feel free to become members, and we'll appreciate. A big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing. Just thank you very much. You guys are the best. And a big shout out to the person that suggested this today. Oh, by the way, I hope you guys are doing alright and may you stay blessed. So today I'm going to react to the unbelievable miracle on Arafa on Arafa in 2018. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. <laughs> This year was the most special of anything I'd ever seen at Arafah. For those of you that haven't seen the clips, it's the year that it rained in Arafah. And SubhanAllah, I've had the opportunity to go for Hajj for over a decade and I've never actually seen rain in Arafah. And to actually create the scene for you, before I even get into the subject of the khutbah, if any of you have been to Hajj in the last few years, you know how it goes on the day of Arafah. Everyone prepares themselves for dua. They get themselves ready for that day. They say, I'm going to go find a mountain and I'm going to stand on a mountain. First they get to Arafah and there's a shock that it's not a mountain. It's actually a nice open space, uh, a plain. And there's mount there, there are mountains and hills, but it is not a mountain. The entire area of Arafah is Arafah. And everyone gets ready to make those duas, to make those prayers. And if you've been in the last few months, you know that the heat quickly humbles you. You start making dua for about an hour and then you have people passing out out of heat exhaustion because they underestimated the sun. And they end up instead in the tents and a lot of people end up spending the entire time in the tents making dua just because it, it, it gets so tough. So this year, as Arafah began, the exact same thing happened as last year and the year before. It was hot. Everyone was excited in the beginning. And then the heat humbled people into their tents. And then subhanAllah, something happens. About two hours in, these clouds formed. Or actually, I'd say about an hour and a half in, these clouds formed over Arafah. And it was very distinct that these clouds were only over the area of Arafah. These millions of people with their hands raised to the sky, pleading to Allah for their personal and for the collective for their dunya and for their akhirah, for their worldly life and for the hereafter, for acceptance and for forgiveness. And then you had these clouds that formed and clouds at that time in the days of Hajj can be very scary as well because people are very vulnerable. If the weather gets bad, then people have no buildings to retreat to. So it doesn't rain there. Uh, usually it's very unlikely for it to ever rain there in that desert. It truly is wadin ghayri di zara a place where fruits and vegetables don't typically grow, grow where it doesn't really rain. And so, you know, people, if it really rains bad, then it can get very dangerous for people. And so when the clouds form, they can be quite intimidating. But these clouds form over the area of Arafah, and a light drizzle starts to come. And then, subhanAllah, that's where the rain starts. And the rain that came down on the day of Arafah on the people that were there in Hajj was so extraordinary, so refreshing. It brought everyone out of their tents and if you took a moment to just peek around you, all you saw was everybody outside standing up with their hands up like this. No one was sitting, no one was in a tent. The rain hits you from this way and then the rain hits you from behind you and it was heavy enough to cool off the entire day of Arafah and at the same time it wasn't too heavy to where it became dangerous for the people that were outside. There was lightning and the lightning actually struck. There's the light, the, the main light uh, source 
the lightning bolt actually struck it directly and lit up all the lights at one time. You saw it happen in front of my own two eyes. And you have this scene out of a movie and you just have suddenly the exact opposite. If someone were to tell you this would be the scene 30 minutes before that, you wouldn't believe it. And SubhanAllah, as that day was special, and I ask Allah again to accept it not just from the people there, but for the entire ummah, for everybody that dua was made on behalf of on that day, and for everyone who fasted that day in reaping the rewards of Arafah. As that's going, as that's taking place, can't help but wonder, who is here this year? <laughs> Who is this guest of Allah, or who are these guests of Allah that this incredible scene was created for the benefit of everybody? And that's actually what I want to focus on for a moment. There are people that attain this status with Allah to where they are the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are different levels of friendship. And there are different things that could happen for people when they actually attain becoming friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that status. There's an exclusive status. There's an exclusive tier which is a Khalid, which is Ibrahim alayhi salam first. Ibrahim alayhi salam, that special exclusive friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Allah chose Ibrahim alayhi salam. And someone says, you know, you, you go through the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam and you hear all of these things that he was put through. And I know that the days of the Hajj are over and you guys are like, we've been hearing khutbahs about Ibrahim alayhi salam for the last few months or for the last month. But pay attention to this for a moment. You, you see the stages of Ibrahim alayhi salam and you go, did it really have to be that harsh? Did he really have to go through this and this and this and this and this and that? But here's the thing. Al-Khullah, or to attain that status of Khalid, Allah empties out everything and fills that only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That heart has to be elevated to a place where it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything is cast within that love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what he went through with his father, of course there was compensation for that. What he went through with his son, with Ismail alayhi salam. The story doesn't end with the, the sacrifice of Ismail alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him, of course, many children after that, right? Many sons after that. So not only did he not lose Ismail alayhi salam, Allah blessed him with many uh, children after that. So Allah replaces what he loses. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that the first person to be dressed on the day of judgment would be Ibrahim alayhi salam because of how he was stripped and thrown into the fire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would honor him first on the day of judgment with a garment as he proceeds to the place of assembly. So everything gets replaced and there is a good ending to all of this, right? But all of that, why? Allah cleared out everything for Ibrahim alayhi salam. When you are chosen to be a Khalil of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there have to be extraordinary steps, things that no other person will be put through. Things that no other person will be put through. Even if you see a dream of you sacrificing your son, you're not supposed to sacrifice your son. No one else goes through this stuff. It's, Allah elevating, He chose Ibrahim Islam and elevated him to a particular spot. And the tests were unique because his station was so unique. And it's exclusive. Or it has a degree of exclusivity because the Prophet ﷺ said, if I was to take a Khalid from my Ummah, a friend from my Ummah, it would have been Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. But Allah has already taken me as a Khalid. So even Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu cannot ascend to that spot with the Prophet ﷺ. He's the Siddiq, he's the best friend of the Prophet ﷺ amongst the people. But the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah has chosen me as a Khalid. And once you're Allah's Khalid, no one else is, is in that relationship. And we have people like that in our lives, and if you look at the hadith, because it's often just translated as friend, the Prophet ﷺ says that a person is on the, on the deen of who? You are on the religion of your Khalil. فَلْيَنظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِلْ So look to who you take as that special friend. Not someone you just hang out with every once in a while, but you really, when you take time, when you start to spend a lot of time with someone, your love, your priorities, and your likeness starts to, to become in, uh, you know, uh, starts to become the same. They start to synchronize. So Khalid is... Very interesting 
video um the example that he started with where people are doing hard and it's hot and they um they exit to their tents i mean sometimes god hears us when you're together praying for something people don't realize that just there's an energy that you're putting out there to the world that maybe god listens to and actually answers to and some and sometimes since since it started raining from now a place that barely has any rain you should you should be reminded that um god is a wonderful god and he does the impossible while it hasn't rained in that area for a long time this time around it was raining on the arafa day and it's like and i guess people continue to um or whatever the whatever else they were doing otherwise sometimes things come to us as miracles when when we want to be disturbed by um satan or something god says no leave these people be and let them enjoy that prayer when it comes to let them enjoy the experience at when it comes to hajj otherwise this was interesting make sure to give this video a thumbs up by the way and like the video said if you're chosen then you're chosen there's nothing that can cut in between you and god and whatever you're supposed to do make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with the friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video